morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Today is Thursday, June 29th, 2023. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's 9.03 a.m. Eastern. And welcome to today's Bible study. So guess what? For those of you who might not have been with me yesterday or who have, this is your first time seeing me. First of all, welcome. My name is Allison and guess what? Today we are reading Revelation chapter 22. We are finishing the book of Revelation today. So like I said yesterday, what, what an accomplishment. I am so, good morning. I am so excited that we are finishing the book of Revelation today. The first time in all my life that I have made it through the entire book. So I'm going to pat myself on the back for doing this. All right. But it's exciting. And today's Thursday, right? Today's Thursday. So today's Thankful Thursday. So let me tell you what today's theme is for Thankful Thursday. Today's theme for Thankful Thursday, we're going to um, pray, let there be. All right. So I'm excited. I love I love the let there be prayers. All right. So let's pray. Let's get into the book of Revelation. I was thinking tomorrow, just quickly, I was thinking tomorrow, maybe I would try and do a recap and just pull together some of the highlights out of the book of Revelation. And then maybe Monday we'll start our next book, which I think we'll just finish up. Um, we have two books of the New Testament to finish up before we will have read the whole New Testament together. So I think Monday, maybe we'll start Mark. And then we'll do Luke and then we'll go into the Old Testament, which will be fun. I love I love some of those Old Testament books. All right. But let's pray and let's, let's finish up. The, I'm calling this the final chapter. Good morning, cousin. Today is the final chapter of Revelation. All right. Today we're reading Revelation chapter 22. We're going to read it out of the Amplified Translation. Um, we've stuck with the Amplified, I think, for the entire book of Revelation. All right. So let's pray. Good morning. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just want to say thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for opening our eyes, God. Thank you that we have breath in our lungs, Lord. I thank you for seeing us through the book of Revelation, for this is such a great accomplishment for myself. This is the first time that I have finished and started the book of Revelation. So God, I thank you for the opportunity to do it and not just do it by myself, but to do it with your family, oh Lord. And Father, I pray that today you will bless the works of our hands, Lord. I pray that you will order our steps, thoughts, actions, words, and deeds. Let everything that we say, let it be pleasing in your sight, oh God. Father, I pray that you will keep us from all accidents, seen and unseen. Keep a hedge of protection around us that cannot be broken, penetrated, nor compromised. Father, keep us in the center of your will. Keep us on the path, the purpose, and the destiny that you have planned for us. Let us not get distracted. Let us not look to the left nor to the right, Lord God. Let us not faint and get weary in well-doing, but Lord, let us continue to keep our eyes and our heart focused on you. Help us to keep pressing towards you, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that you will bless the children, bless our family members, bless our bloodlines, maternal and paternal, from the oldest to the youngest, Lord God. Father, I thank you for a wonderful day. Father, I thank you for bringing us through the month of June. I thank you, oh Lord, for everything that you're doing in our lives, everything that you have ever done, everything that you are in the midst of doing and working out on our behalf. Lord, I thank you for everything that you will do in the future because you are not done with us yet, Lord. Lord, and you are a good, good father. So may our lives be marked by miracle signs and wonders. Lord, let there be a fresh anointing upon our lives. Let the angels of the Lord go before us, making easy and successful all of our days. Let there be breakthroughs and unexpected blessings in our day today. Let every crooked path be made straight in our lives and remain straight. Father, increase our creativity. Let there be divine alignment, divine connections, divine compensation, divine timeline divine restoration, divine healing uh, in our lives. Let there be a spirit of excellence in everything that we do. Let our eyesight, insight, foresight increase and improve daily in the natural realm and in the spiritual realm. Let our faith be increased. Let our families be saved. Let our lives be used for your glory. Father, show us your glory. Use our lives for your glory in greater measure. Let our health be restored. Father, heal our bodies and our emotions. Let increase be our portion, O oh God. Let 
joy fill our lives and our days. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives. Let there be light. Show us everything we need to know and be aware of God. Let us not be deceived in any area of our lives. Let multiple streams of income and blessings be released to us today, oh God. Let multi let miracles show up in our day. Let newness fill our lives, new ideas, new strategies, new homes, new job offers, oh God. Let the right doors be open for us and the wrong doors be closed. Let opportunities be presented to us today. Let peace fill our hearts, our homes, and our minds. Protect us, oh Lord. Protect our families. Protect our possessions. Protect our food, our water, and our DNA, oh God. Father, I pray that you will bless our food, bless our water, bless the air that we breathe, oh God. Bless every step that we take, every move that we make. Let us make quantum progress in our purposes, our businesses, our health, our finances, in our spiritual lives, Lord God. Let us recover all that has been stolen from us, oh God. Let us recover the years that the enemy has stolen. Father, reveal the agenda of everyone coming into our lives. Expose all wrong and hidden motives in people and situations, Lord God. Reveal solutions to our problems. Father, let us experience supernatural financial blessings, breakthroughs, and success. Father, give us strategies for the days and times that we're living in. Let us be thankful, oh God, for everything that you have done, everything that you were doing, and everything that that you will do in the future. Father, let us understand the times and seasons. Let us understand our assignments and the purpose for us being alive on the earth, oh God. Let victory be our portion in every area of our lives. Let our level of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, let it increase daily, oh God. Cause us to win in every area of our lives. Show us where, oh God, to shop and buy our food today. Father, let us have x-ray vision to see the hidden things that are meant to hinder and to harm us, oh God. Cause us to see and be aware of the things that are taking place behind the scenes, oh God, in the back, uh, back rooms, oh Lord, under the table deals. Father, just give us wisdom and perception. Father, let our youth be restored and renewed like the eagles and let us have a fresh zeal for your word and your your um, your way, oh God. Cause us to just walk upright, Father. Let us have joy in our hearts. Let us just have um, peace in our homes and our relationships today, oh God. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to read your word once again. And as we read chapter 22, the final chapter of the book of Revelation, God, I just pray that you will bless it and let us glean everything from this word, from your word today that you have for each and every one of us. Meet us exactly where we are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I happen to really like this prayer today. I'm going to have to um, print this out and read this every day in my own personal prayer time. I actually, I really like this one. All right. So let's get into what I'm calling the final chapter. We are in the final chapter of the book of Revelation. So this is exciting. I'm telling you, this is really an accomplishment for me. And I'm so glad that I was able to do it and share it with you, my family and friends. All right. So Revelation chapter two in the Amplified Translation, we have a couple of footnotes. I didn't read the footnotes, but we have a couple of footnotes. All right. So the first section is called the perfect life. Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life, clear, clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb Christ in the middle of its street. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will no longer exist anything that is cursed because sin and illness and death are gone. Isn't that great news? And the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his bond servants will serve and worship him with great awe and joy and loving devotion. And they will be privileged to see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will no longer be night. They have no need for lamp light or sunlight because the Lord God will illumine them and they will reign as kings forever and ever. We could call this section good news too, right? Next section, starting at verse six, titled, You Are Invited to Be Blessed. And that's the truth. We all have an opportunity to serve the Lord, right? We all have the decision to make who 
choose ye this day who you will serve, right? And then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits and of the prophets has sent his angel as a representative to show his bond servants the things that must soon take place. I'm telling you, I feel like we're in the end times. And behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired is the one who heeds and takes to heart and remembers the words of the prophecy. That is the predictions, the consolations, and the warnings contained in this book or scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who heed and remember the truths contained in the words of this book. Worship God. Now we heard that once before, right? I'm going to give you the scripture reference for that. Verse 10. And he said to me, listen, do not seal up the words of this prophecy, of the prophecy of this book for the time of their fulfillment is near. I feel like that. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong and the one who is filthy, vile and impure still be filthy and the one who is righteous, just and upright still be righteous and the one who is holy still be holy. Behold, I, Jesus, am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give each one according to the merit of his deeds, that is his earthly works and his faithfulness. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the eternal one. Verse 14, blessed, blessed are those who wash their robes in the blood of Christ by believing and trusting in him, the righteous who do his commandments so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Verse 15, outside are the dogs, the godless, the impure, those of low moral character and the sorcerers with their intoxicating drugs and magic arts. And the immoral persons, that is the perverted, the molesters, the adulterers, and the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying, deception, and cheating. That's a very um, vast list. The final invitation, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you and give you assurance of these things for the churches. I am the root, the source, the life, and the offspring of David and the radiant and bright morning star. The Holy Spirit and the bride or the church, the believers, say, come and let the ones who hear say, come and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes, <clears throat> excuse me, take and drink the water of life without cost. I testify and warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, its predictions, its consolations, and its admonitions. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues the afflictions, the calamities, which are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from or distorts the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away from that one his share from the tree of life and from the holy city, New Jerusalem, which are written in this book. He who testifies and affirms these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, be with all the saints, all the believers, those set apart for God. Amen and amen. What a wonderful blessing. I mean, well, it is a wonderful blessing, a wonderful ending, I was going to say. Yes. Come, Lord Jesus, come. How many times have we said that? I feel like I say that. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When things start to get crazy, right? I always say, come, Lord Jesus, come. The grace of the Lord, the Christ, the Messiah, be with all the saints, all the believers, all of those who are set apart for God. Amen. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> okay, let's go through the footnotes. The footnotes here. Actually, you know what? Today, I did it like that yesterday. I'm just, I'm, I'll start with my notes and then... We'll catch up as we go along with the footnotes. <clears throat> so here's the thing. I just, this is just a, um, 
a quick thing I do when I sit down to study in the morning, I always make note of how many verses are in the chapter. So I scrolled down. I said, okay, there's 21 verses. And I keep referring to Revelation chapter 22 as the final chapter, right? Because it's the end. It's the last book of the Bible. And it is the last chapter in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to title this the final chapter. All right. But then I said, oh my goodness, so 21, right? As I pay attention to numbers, 21, seven times three, seven, the number of completion or perfection, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. That's just what my, that, that's what Allison thought of. That's all I'm saying. I just thought of that when I said, oh my goodness, the final chapter, there's 21, there's 21 verses, seven times three, perfection or completion, three, seven times three, 21. All right. So here I have in my notes, um, in verse number two, it says here, on either side of the river was the tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit. So we had like the 12 apostles, there's 12 kinds of fruit, right? So we have seen the repetition of the number 12 throughout the Bible, yielding its fruit every month. And we have 12 months in the year and the leaves of the tree. But this is why I wrote this down. It says the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And now just in the natural sense, I made note of this for myself. It says the leaves were of the tree were for the healing of the nations. I'm just going to take this literally in terms of our diet and the things that we're eating and, and how eating a healthy diet full of um, leafy greens, right? You're eating your fruits and your vegetables, natural things that come from nature, sort of like a Daniel diet, right? The Daniel fast. It really is for the healing of the body right? is beneficial. So I just made note of that because I thought it was um, kind of relevant to where we are today, especially where we are in a day and a time where um, they just approved synthetic meat to be sold. That's just the bonus, right? So we are already eating modified foods. And I looked at my jar of mayonnaise this week. Well, I knew it, but I happened to look at another jar and I'm going to now have to change my strategy. But, um, it says made from bioengineered products. I don't want that. That's just me. I don't want, I don't want to be eating all these bioengineered, all this bioengineered, this bioengineered, that synthetic meat, synthetic you know, all this stuff, all this tampering and modification that's going on. I don't want it. So anyway, I'm thinking about the leaves of the tree that were for the healing in the nations. And those of you, um, you guys know I'm growing fruits, and I'm not fruits, I'm growing vegetables here, you know. So start your garden, even if you have to do it in your window, get your pots and your seeds and your, um, try to find your non-GMO seeds, get yourself some dirt and try to start growing your own food. Okay, then I wrote down verse number three. There will no longer exist anything that is cursed because sin and illness and death are gone and the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his bond servants will serve him and worship him with great joy, joy, awe and loving devotion. Listen to verse four. And they will be privileged to see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Not the mark of the beast, the name of the Lord will be on their foreheads. And there will no longer be night. They have no need for lamplight or sunlight because the Lord God will illumine them and they will reign as kings forever and ever. So we read about that um, yesterday, right? There's no need for, there's no moon, there's no sun. We don't need anything else to bring light. It's God's great, his, his glorious... Um, his glory, his radiance, his splendor, his majesty, all of who and what he is, is lighting up heaven, right? Okay. Okay, verse eight. Then I have, let me see where the footnotes start. The footnotes start at seven. Okay, so seven says, and behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is the one who heeds and takes to heart and remembers the words of this prophecy. And so the footnote for seven says, this is the sixth of the seven promised blessings. Okay, then it has a footnote for <clears throat> 10, but I want to stop at eight. 
I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, do not do that. Do not worship the angel. Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and the prophets and with those who heed and remember. Right. And so I just made a reference because we saw that in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, the same thing happens where he went to go worship the angel and the angel said, do not do that. You cannot worship me. I am an angel. I am just a fellow servant, right? We are to worship God and worship God only. So the other thing is that we have to continue to remember not to fall prey to worshiping different things. It's so easy to fall into um, idolatry, unknowing, knowingly or unknowingly, right? We can worship our phones because we don't leave without our phones a lot of times, right? People know where their phones are. If you don't have your phone, you can't put your hand on your phone. You leave the house without your phones. We're in a day and time where a lot of people flip out because everything we do, we can do from the touch of our phones, right? So we have to be careful about what it is that we make an idol. Do you make your relationship an idol? Do you make food an idol? Do you make money an idol? Is your house an idol? Is your brand new car your idol? Right? Okay. So then, let me see, the, where's the next footnote? All right, so verse 10. Here's the footnote for verse 10. And he said to me, do not, do not seal up the words of the prophecy for this book, for the, for the time of their fulfillment is near. Now, I wrote down Daniel chapter 10. Be, I mean, I wrote down verse 10 because now in the book of Daniel, it says, while Daniel was instructed to seal up his prophecy, John was now told to reveal his. So that is Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. And it reads, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. All right. And sometimes I think we can be too smart for our own good, right? Sometimes we think we know so much that we don't listen to, we don't listen to God and listen to wisdom because we think we know everything right so it says knowledge shall be increased and we are in a day and time where knowledge information is at your fingertips right we we have so much access to information you can take in information all day long but you got to be careful about what it is that we're taking in right that's another way of being deceived now let me just talk about that now that i said that because i was listening to something this morning and I was just making mention of all of the different fake foods that are out there now, right? So you have this new coating now that they're putting on the fruits and vegetables that are supposed to lengthen their shelf life, right? But what's the cost of that? And if you just walk in the grocery store and you see this sticker on your food and you don't know what that is and you just buy it thinking and you think it's just like, um, you know how your bananas might say Chiquito or might say Dole right now. You see this label on your fruit. If you don't know what that is, you might think that that's just a brand. Or you might think that that is healthy, right? Now you, that's another form. So there's all these ways of deception. So like I was saying, now the FDA just approved they can now sell you synthetic meat, right? Fake meat made from cells. Right now, I heard something else I was listening to. They were talking about questioning the cells that this meat is being made from. Now, what happens when you go into a restaurant and you're being fed synthetic lab grown meat, but it's not on the menu and you don't know now that you're taking in synthetic lab grown meat. And I watched a video of them making steak. Well, it's not steak. Actually, it's not steak. It's some concoction, but they have the machine because now you have all of this 3D printing. So they have a machine now that can make what appears to be steak and it has the red stuff that it spits out and the white stuff to make it look like it's marbling. And it is not, it did not come from a cow, but they now have perfected it to mold it where they can sell it to you, package it, make it look like a delicious steak and there is no real meat in it. Right? And you got to watch it. You know how you, I, I was trying to describe it to somebody. You know how you put frosting, you see the, the, the pastry decorators, they put the frosting in that tube and they squeeze it and you squeeze it and then the icing comes out and you can make all your decorations. Well, that, but imagine that in a machine, but it's printing out red and white and it marbles it like a steak. Now you go into the grocery store 
and you buy this and you don't know what you're eating, right? Because unless it says this is synthetic and this came from a machine that does not come from a cow, you're deceived, right? And so we're seeing all of this manipulation with the food. Yeah, it is very true. You're seeing all of this manipulation. Now, let's just take, because I've been posting things from the sky, right? Those of you who are, or I don't know who is or is not keeping up with what's going on in the sky, but people continue to put up pictures of what they think are clouds, that they are not clouds. And I'm trying to inform everybody they are not clouds. And there is something going on and we need to be aware of what is happening in the sky, right? What are those tic-tac-toe grids you're seeing in the sky? I saw a whole thing of like six tic-tac-toe grids in the sky over my house yesterday. What is that? I know what that is. Does everybody else know what that is, right? And so people keep posting these pictures and they keep saying, oh, look at the beautiful clouds and they're not clouds. And you have to read because the pilots are coming out now. They're talking about what it is. Those that are hired to go do that, they are revealing what it is that they are releasing into the atmosphere. But if you don't know, you look up and you're like, oh my goodness, look at that beautiful pattern. No, ma'am and no, sir. Right? Deception. Deceived. You think, oh my goodness, look at this beautiful cloud and it's not a real cloud. All right, so we're seeing more and more of these things. This is what I'm saying. We're in the end, I believe, I feel like we are closer and closer than ever to the end times, right? We're seeing lawlessness. We're seeing all of this lewdness, this perversion, right? You see the books that they're putting in the school libraries for the children. Um, there's just, there's a lot going on. All right, so here we go. Where are we now? Verse 12. Verse 12, behold, I, Jesus, am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give each one according to the merit of his deeds, your earthly works, your faithfulness. I am the eternal, the alpha and the omega, the first, the last, the beginning and the end, the eternal one. Now, let me just say this. Verse 12, here, I wrote this in my notes too. It says, my reward is with me to give each one according to his merit, to his own deeds. So what is it that you're going to be accountable for? What are we accountable for? What are we, are we going to be pleased when God opens up the scroll of everything that you've done, good and bad, and now you've got to give an account and your reward is based on, it says, according to your deeds, right? You ever sit down and debate a situation and you're thinking the pros and cons? Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? The pros and cons. Is this going to benefit me? Do I have more rewards and benefits or am I going to have more consequences and the consequences outweigh the good? Right. So what's going to happen when we have to give an account and now he's measuring the our it says our earthly works, our faithfulness. Are we faithful? What are our deeds? Our deeds are going to speak for us. Right. And then we're going to be rewarded according to. So I think about that. I think of the list of everything that I have to give an account for. And that's why I say, you know. We got to get ready, get ready, get ready, and then stay ready and stop adding to the list of things that we have to answer for. All right. Verse 14. It says here, blessed are those who wash their robes in the blood of Christ by believing and trusting in him. The righteous who do his commandments so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Let's flow right into 15. Outside are the dogs, the godless, the impure, those of low moral character, the sorcerers the with their intoxicating drugs, their magic arts, the immoral persons, the perverted. Listen, here we go. The perverted, the molesters, the adulterers, the murderers, the idolaters, the liars, the cheaters. You know how easy it is for people to fall into all of this? Look at the perversion on social media. Look at the perversion we just saw at the parades, the perversion, right? The molesters, we keep hearing. I just read a story of um, these men that, that rescued these children that were being sex trafficked, right? So we're hearing about the sex trafficking. The adulterers, look at how many people are sleeping with people who, are not, who they're not married to. The murderers, look at how many people have committed murderers. Look at how many people are in idolatry. Look at how many people are habitual liars, cheaters, stealers, 
deception, you know, deceivers. So your walk really has to be tight, right? The low moral character, those who are impure, the godless, those who, who say there is no God or those who say the tree is their God or whatever, right? A lot of people, if you don't repent and get together, get it together, get your act together, you know how we read in some of the other chapters, it was like, whoa, 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 right? Whoa. That's what we have to say. Whoa. So we have to repent, take notice and try to do better each and every day. We want to be better than we were yesterday. Okay. Let's see. Next footnote. The final judgment for the believer will occur when he stands before Christ to have his fidelity and service judged and the appropriate reward determined. Yeah, that's why I re I try to repent all the time. You know, God forgive me for everything that I have done that I know that I did, that I didn't mean to do, that I still don't even know that I did. Right? I repent. And then help me to stop doing it. Sometimes just, you know. All right. Verse 14. That was, okay, here's a footnote for 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes. Okay, so we just read that. And so the footnote for that is, this is the seventh of the last of the promised blessings. And let me just see what else I have in my notes. I just have a reference here for, um, I didn't pull it up. Let me see if I can pull it up. I have a reference here for 2 John chapter 8. Let's see what that is. The connection is. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. So I'm just going to say that we want to just be mindful of how we conduct ourselves, the thoughts that we think, the words that we speak, the places we go, the things that we do. You know, do we have good intentions? Do we have bad intentions? You know, okay, so my cousin is asking a question. She says, if we have repented and are a new creation and walk in the ways of the Lord, aren't we forgiven and he remembers our sins no more? So when we are judged, is it a, a, according to our current status? I, he's just, um, off, just off the top of my head. Yes, I do believe that we can repent and he will forgive us. I still think that um, you know, I heard somebody else talking about this and, and, and so I ponder this, right? Like in the natural, when you do things, just because you say you're sorry, that does not mean that there are not consequences, right? You can be, you can say, I'm sorry, and you can be forgiven, but that does not mean that you don't have to bear the natural consequences that come with it. So I really, I, I'm not an authority on that, Gigi. So I really can't, I can't answer that definitively. All I can say is this. You've always wondered, right? All I can say is this. Do I think that we will have to answer, or let me just say Allison. Do I think that Allison will have to answer for her rap sheet? Absolutely, I do. I think, even as far as God saying, why did you waste the time that I gave you? Why didn't you use your time wisely? Why did you continue to eat those foods that you knew that you weren't supposed to eat that led to the inflammation in your body, right? The same way we question our children about things that we do, that they do, we forgive them. Right. And we don't hold it against them forever. But do I put you on punishment? Do I take away your toys, even though I forgive you and I release you from it? But if I don't, if you never have to answer, I'm talking about our natural children. But if I never make you accountable, what happens? Then you go on and you repeat it over again. You don't really learn your lesson. Right. So. I don't know. I don't know the full answer to that, Gigi, but do I think that we will have to give an account for the things that we've done? Absolutely. You know, are we forgiven? Yes. Um, 
you know, but I don't think, I don't, and I think the intention is not for us because what well, here's what happens too. People will use forgiveness as a, like a crutch, right? People feel like they can just keep sinning because God will continually forgive them. And so they feel like I don't ever have to do better because all I have to do is I'm going to mess up and then I repent. I mess up, I repent. I mess up, I repent. And that's not, and they take, try to take it advantage of it and take God's forgiveness um, and his mercy and his gracey, they, his grace and mercy, they try to take it, take advantage of it. You know, and, and you just can't play God like that. You can play with God like that. You cannot play about God like that. And so I just, I would rather be, safe than sorry and just try not to mess up and not to add any anything else to my sheet and if I do know that I messed up try to make sure that I repent for it quickly you know I don't know Gigi I'm just not the authority on it but I'm like you it is a good question but yeah I kind of do think you know I do think we have to be accountable for what for what we have done for what we have said for what we have thought because he knows your thoughts he knows your actions he knows your deeds he knows your heart so sometimes, you know, I try to even ca catch what it is when I'm, what I think, you know, when you see craziness going on or you can hear something about somebody else's business now, you know, um, I was reading something and I said, you know what, I, I can't give my attention to that because that, that's just not my business. It's not my concern. My focus has to be on what's going on right now in the end times because things are happening all around us, the food, the water, the water's contaminated like never before, right? So we have to be, you know, I have other things I have to give my time and my attention to. All right. So with that, this has been interesting. This has been great. This is, this was for those who joined late, joined late. Today, we finished the book of Revelation. We finished uh, Revelation chapter 22. I read it in its, in, in its entirety out of the Amplified Translation. Just off the top of my head, I think what I might want to do if I have time to pull it together is we'll I'll do a brief recap of Revelation tomorrow. And then Monday we will start the book of uh, we did Matthew, then we'll do Mark, Luke, and then we will have concluded the whole New Testament. So I guess it might be an acknowledgement on our part. And we are told Jesus paid the price for our sins, past, present, and future. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you can make heaven. Right. But that doesn't mean I don't owe God an explanation, you know, that I don't have to, still don't have to give an account. You know, like I said, that, that I guess that's really, you know, my thought. We have to be accountable. We can't just keep messing up and then just say sorry. And then we mess up because we know we can say sorry and try to use God like that. Use his grace and his mercy and take advantage of it. So, you know, I think. Once you get to a certain level of knowledge and wisdom, right? Um, what's, what is it? You know, more more is expected of us. When you know better, you do better, right? Just as like as your children in the natural, as they get older and they learn and they know better, we expect them to do better. When you're a child, you do as a child, right? And I give you the grace and the mercy of a child because I don't expect a two-year-old to act like a 10-year-old. Right. I give the two year old the grace and the mercy because they're two. They don't know. But at 10, when you do something and you know, I hold you accountable as a 10 year old. I expect more of you, the older and the wiser you get when you know better. Right. So we don't want to take advantage of God's grace and his mercy. So we just try to do the best that we can. And when we know we mess up because we do, we mess up a lot, you know, um, then we just repent. We try to get it right. Just try to make sure our motives are right. The you know our heart are right. Our hearts are right that we're doing things with the right intention, not to harm people, but we do things to benefit people, right? So anyway, that's it. I gotta go because we're late. All right. So for those of you who were watching on YouTube, and I ask everybody, please do visit my YouTube channel. If you have not visited my YouTube channel yet, the name is Allison Vaughn. I ask that you visit it and please do subscribe. Help me share the word of God with the world. For those that are visually impaired, those who just like to hear the Bible read to them, 
help me work with the algorithm so that YouTube will push it out to more people. All right. If you look over here, over this shoulder in a few seconds, you will see my profile picture. If you click or tap on my profile picture, it will take you to a button where you can subscribe. Please tap or click that button and subscribe to my channel. If you look over this shoulder in a few seconds, you will see a video card. That video card will take you to... I don't know what I'm going to link it to because this is the last chapter. I usually take it to the, the next chapter in that book, but I might just link this to the entire book of Revelation and then you can go back and read any chapter that you want. All right. Everything that we have done so far or that I've uploaded so far, it's in a playlist. It's in its own playlist on my YouTube channel. So it's easily accessible for all of you. You can get to any book that's up there in any chapter. Everything is labeled nicely for you. So it's easy for you to catch the replays or listen to anything that you want to hear again. I also have other videos up there from different Facebook lives I have done. There's one on the submission, uh, submission in marriage. There's one on my experience with 40 days of fasting, the power of your words. Someone's always watching. So there's various videos and topics, not just Bible study, that is up, that um, the videos are up on my channel and I'll continue to upload more as I have time. All right. It's a little time consuming. All right. So everyone have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. Thank you so much for joining. And we will um, be back tomorrow, 9 a.m. And it'll be Feel Good Friday. All right. Everyone have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. All right. Bye. See you tomorrow.